the defensive effort in the second half and overtime and how the momentum of that game seemed to flip uh, after halftime? Yeah, I mean, that was our discussion at halftime. Uh, I challenged our starters. Uh, I thought our starters were awful in the first half. Uh, I thought our bench came in, gave us some life, got us back in the game. Then to close the first half, we went back to our starters and uh, it was a three-point barrage. We didn't, we didn't defend anybody and they didn't feel us. And that was, that was a conversation, that was a clips, that was a challenge. And, you know, uh, I'm proud of our guys because they answered the bell and we forced them to call the first time out in the third quarter. And just listen to the second half numbers, including overtime, 58 points allowed, 39% from the field, 31% from the three-point line. We had 32 assists, only nine turnovers. We scored 80 paint points, which is uh, a ridiculous number of points in the paint. Uh, and, and I thought Will Barton down the stretch in overtime was clutch, you know, making his free throws. I think he had eight of our uh, 16 uh, overtime points. That's our challenge, Mike. I mean, we, we keep on talking about it. But in the second half, we defended, we won the game. Hopefully tomorrow against the same team, we don't have to wait until second half to get our defense going. We'll go to Harrison Wynn. Hey, Michael, all year we've talked about Monte as just kind of that model of consistency. What was maybe the biggest thing that stood out about his night tonight to you? I mean, it's not surprising, Harrison. I mean, I think Monte is, uh, he, he's been incredible. I mean, uh, off the bench for us. And, you know, tonight he plays 32 minutes, 17 points, uh, three rebounds, three assists. Um, his ability to know when to attack, know when to get off the ball, make a play for somebody else. His competitive spirit on the defensive end of the floor. And just his overall uh, uh, confidence right now. I mean, Monte Morris, uh, I'm so thankful. You know, he signed that contract extension. He's been a really important piece of what we've done here these last few years. Uh, and uh, I just love how confident and aggressive he's playing. And we've said that for a couple of years now. When Monte plays like that, he's a difference maker. And that's how he's played every night for us. Uh, you know, which is great to see. Uh, Monte is the Pied Piper. Everybody loves that kid, has a huge amount of respect for that kid, as do I. Go to Joel Rush. Hey, Coach. Uh, I was looking at some numbers, and pretty consistently over the uh, past few seasons, the Nuggets have limited the frequency of above the break three pointers pretty well, but uh, the corner threes have been a pretty high frequency. So just wondering about the defensive scheme and if that is a challenge specifically for your type of defense. Yeah, the way we play pick and rolls, you know, we, we're, we're, we open up ourselves a little bit to, uh, to the corner three. Um, but you know, two years ago, we had the number one three point defense in the NBA. Obviously last year we dropped the middle of the pack. And, uh, and uh, as of right now, obviously, we're not anywhere close to being where we need to be. The weird thing for me is that within every game, there is such a uh, drastic up and down between quarter to quarter, half to half. As I mentioned, in the first half, there were 11 of 25 for 44%. In the second half, plus overtime, there were 6 of 19 for 31%. We've shown we can do it. Uh, we, we've shown that we have the ability to be the best in the NBA at doing it. The challenge is, Joel, to do it a lot more consistently and as close to 48 minutes as possible. And when our guys lock in on that end, because that second quarter was, uh, we were just letting them shoot. I think uh, Mikael Bridges had five threes in the first half, didn't miss. Um, so it's just a, a greater awareness, greater discipline, and greater multiple effort. Well, Todd Romero. Hey, Coach, you really looked down the stretch and you guys needed a bucket and things were back and forth. That Obviously, you went to the big guy down low in Nicole. I thought the team was very patient in trying to find him down low. Well, he's the, one of the best closers in the game. I mean, obviously, the last you know, three, four years, you know, we've been one of the better late-game teams. We've had our struggles this season. Uh, but Jamal and Nicole have proven time and time again to never be afraid of the moment and never be afraid of taking the big shot. And, you know, Nicola's our best player, man. We're going to play through him, give him the ball, knowing he's going to make the right play. Uh, I thought Jamal's energy uh, in that third quarter well, was infectious. I think everybody kind of fed off of that. Gary, Will, Paul, Nicola. Um, but, yeah, down the stretch, you know, Nicola's going to have the ball, and we trust him 1,000% to make the right play. Go to Ryan Blackburn. 
Hey, coach, you mentioned the 80 points of the paint. It felt like there was a lot of control and consistency attacking the rim tonight and doing exactly what the team needed to do. Gary Harris and Will Barton specifically just just looked like different players out there just attacking with reckless abandon. What gives you like, uh, excuse me, uh, what what changes about this Nuggets team when Gary is attacking the way he is and Will is attacking the way that he is? Well, I think, you know, we, we've made shooting more threes a point of emphasis, shooting more paint threes, more corner threes, a point of emphasis. And it's a fine line because you also want to play with an attack mode mentality. And, you know, when we have transition opportunities, I want our guys thinking attack, not settle. In the half court, if your jump shot's not going, we couldn't buy a three tonight. I thought Monte Morris had a huge three for us late in this game. We only made six out of 26. Um, so when your jump shot's not going, you got to find other ways to score and get into the basket, putting pressure on the rim, getting to the free throw line uh, are, are all easy ways to do that. So um, when we're attacking, you mentioned Gary, you mentioned Will, whether it's Jamal Murray, Monte, PJ, Faku, um, you're a lot harder to defend instead of just playing soft around the perimeter. You're putting pressure on the defense, you're putting pressure on the paint and on the rim. And obviously tonight we had a terrific night in the paint.